Want to see how we go from this to this? Keep watching and we will show you how. All right, here's what we're gonna be using today. We're using Stone Coat Countertops Epoxy. This is only five and a half square feet. I like to do eight ounces per square foot on my exotic pours. So I have 16 ounces, the most here of this sparkle silver. I have eight ounces of the rest of my colors, which is chrome dust from Stone Coat, blue earth metallic from Stone Coat, as well as royal blue. I have Aqua Sea, which is color passion that I get from Artist Till Death, and some diamond dust in clear. I'm going to start this process by doing a primer coat of that sparkle silver. And that's about one ounce per square foot just to be able to allow the epoxy to move. You'll see there's some clear on my board that was just left over from what was in my bucket. So I'm gonna use about half of this I'll make it last a little less than half just to get the board primer. I just use my stick to move that around because epoxy only goes where other epoxy has been. So this will just help it flow a little bit easier. You won't really see much of this underneath. And then we'll start to mix our exotic pour cups. I've got about an hour and a half, I'd say, total working time with the countertop epoxy. But we pull tape at about one hour to allow that design to flow over those edges. So what I do here is I just take my hand, rub it towards the edge. Doesn't have to be perfect. We've leveled the counter. This will help everything flow nicely. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for my exotic pour cups, I'll come mix them over here so you can see them. All right, I'm using two different 16 ounce cups. I like to layer my epoxy a little different in each one in order to have a variety of designs on the counter. So between each layer, I am going to add some white spray paint and that is gonna create some really cool natural effects that you don't normally see without it. Now hopefully you can see inside that cup a bit. I'm just layering different blues. About every two colors, I'll work the spray paint. And I'm not going in any particular order. Okay, so that's cup one. I'm gonna to move to cup number two, and I'm just changing the order in which I was pouring it. I typically will leave a little bit from each cup in their cups because I want to be able to add some extra color here and there if I need it. But I'll utilize most of it right now in these two cups and then we'll wait. We'll see what it looks like when we start to pour it. See if we need to adjust it all. All right, so we'll save this for the next couple cups. And the diamond dust with the clear, I save for the end to make some really cool effects. There we go.
Okay, now what I wanna do here is take some of that sparkle silver, and I wanna keep some of this table silver. So I am going to slowly pour in between some of these sections with that silver by itself. I do want to use a little of this chrome for a couple spots before I use the rest in cups. So let's see, I'm going to come over to this area and I'm just going to pour a slight little line here, a pocket here. I'm sort of making this geode inspired, so that's why I'm doing these sort of shapes along the way. Also have the diamond dust I think this would actually be a really good place to start filling in a couple gaps before I go on and so I'll pour a little of this diamond dust here because it has the silver behind it that's the color it's going to show through but I'll also pour some of this in areas where it's overlapping color but I'm going to save that for a little bit later All right, let's mix up the last cup. Now there's very little chrome left, so this is gonna be quite a blue cup. So I may not use as much of this aqua color because it's got a lot in there already. So I want more of this royal blue to kind of be the hero in this last cup. I think we filled in most of it. So now I'm gonna add in my diamond dust and then as well as this blue. So this blue, I'd like to make some accent lines. Let's do a quick torch, see what this looks like, and we'll see these little dots pop up. So now I'm going to hit it with some alcohol. This is just clear, 99% isopropyl alcohol. And I'm just dripping it in big drops. I don't want a lot of little teeny tiny holes. 
but I'm trying to mimic the cool effects that you will see in natural stone. Wow, that looks pretty amazing right now. That alcohol makes everything move really natural. And all those little holes and circles are going to settle down quite a bit. So we're gonna give it, uh, let's say about 45 minutes and then we will pull the tape and show you what it looks like. It's been an hour and we are ready to pull that tape. I'm gonna start in the back and run around the front. So I'm gonna let this pour, going to help it along as fast as possible. That way we don't lose any design whatsoever as it's trying to flow. This is where if you have some table drippings, you can just grab from that if you need to. Certain areas you don't want to try to touch, right? That's all flowing really pretty. We don't want to lose that. Try to grab like colors. Most of it's going to flow off anyway. What I do from here, so I'm going to let this flow for a little bit. I'm gonna let the table drippings, as you can see, it's dripping on the table. It's creating its own really cool marbled look. I'm gonna let that set up maybe a good hour or so. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm going to add those to my countertop or this table in this instance. And I'll also wait for the clear with the diamond dust to set up the same way so I can add some really thick veins just with the diamond dust, but that'll allow it to be thick so it won't move and spread. It'll just be nice solid lines. So we'll show you how that looks. Okay, so it's been about an hour since we pulled tape. Now it's pretty cool in our shop today. And so the epoxy has continued to flow longer than normal. So we probably could have given it maybe an extra half hour or so before we even pulled the tape. So what you'll see is that it has softened. The design has softened a lot. And if you run into this situation, you're gonna to need to know what to do about it. You can re-pour it, but there's some really cool effects that I do like, but I lost a lot of the cool effects that I didn't wanna lose. So what I will do is some of this table epoxy that has flowed off, I am going to scoop it up and I'm going to pour it over some areas and I'll probably wait. You can even see, look how fluid this is still. Right? It should be, far more set up by this time. So it's definitely a temperature issue in here. And I'd say it's about 70 degrees in here. So what I like to do with this, as you can see, it creates its own really cool effects. Let me show you what happens when I torch it. So it'll create those bubbles and these dots. Now, when I let this set up even longer, those will hold and it creates some really, really cool effects. So I'm gonna let most of this table epoxy continue to set up for maybe another half hour or so, check it, add some more design, let it sit, continue to play with it. And now I have that clear with that diamond dust, I'm gonna go ahead and add some of those veins as well. And we'll show you how it looks at the end. All right, so as I had mentioned, this had gotten really boring. So what I did is I'm taking some of the table drippings that I'm putting into a cup and I'm spray painting layers just like I did for the exotic pour, but it's really, really set up. So this time I am taking just random drippings. You can see me come on here. So if I just scoop it up off the table and then I'm layering, I have black spray paint and I, and I used a little aluminum as well. And you can do white. After you spray, add a little more of the table drippings on there so that way it has something to mix with. And then I'm using this to border areas and add interest because it got very, very soft. So here I'm going to border 
this section, I'm gonna come around just like that. Let it run off the table. And then let it run off the table. That looks pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I almost want it to meet here. So I might add some that kind of comes to a point down to this section, since I still have some in the cup. I'm gonna go slow and start it where it joins the other one. And then here, and I'm actually just gonna use what's left in this cup to kind of create another ring. Even that looks cool. Let that drip off, create some cool effects. But as you can see, I'm doing that throughout. And when I torch it, it those bubbles. You can see here, if you can get the light, the aluminum spray paint that I put in there is kind of sitting on top. I wouldn't want that to be all over, but a couple little spots looks really cool. And I'm still messing with it and deciding what to do. I kind of think maybe add a little alcohol in that section. So this is how I create a lot of my pieces. It's just trying it out, you know, see what it'll do. Is it too late for it to set up it, or to, to move with alcohol? Put a little in and find out. Kind of like that. I'm gonna spritz it a little bit. Spritz. I'm gonna spritz it just a little bit so it breaks up that center part with that aluminum. I already added some of the diamond dust veins here and there. I still have a little bit left if I wanna throw some in there, but this is really adding to it. So here's the next section I'm going to attack with adding some black so that way it's balanced. I'm gonna spray some black spray paint. More table drips. Could even do a little white in there. But always end with table drips on top of the paint because we don't want that to be the first thing that comes out. So I'm just going to trace this area and define it a bit. It's looking much better. Very geodesque. I might do one more pocket of that, that silver, that aluminum on here, maybe in this corner just so that way there's a balance to it, like right along here. So let's see how that looks. We'll take a little of the table drippings. You can use a smaller cup. It's probably better if you do, a little more control over it. It doesn't have to blend as much as it's making its way out. And end with your table drippings. to that black. So what you can see inside the cup is that the aluminum is sitting on top. That's what's going to happen with any metallic color. So that's why it's staying on top of the piece and it does the same inside the cup. But let's put that right through this soft area. I can take, for instance, uh, a little tiny bit that's still in my cup, scoop it with a stick, and 
follow it this way. So that way I'm not putting down too much and I have a little more control over where it goes. I want things to be balanced. Of course, there's gonna be different things to look at across the entire piece, but if there's missing colors, I want it to show, you know, the black, the white, the silver, everything in every, in every section. So here's what I mean about using your table dripping. So if I just sprayed a little right here, and I just do a little mashup of colors, just like that, I can then take that, not over mixing, and now I can follow that line that I wanted a little hint of that black. Now it's a nice fine line. I still have some diamond dust that I can add in. It's super, super thickened by now. This is what it looks like after uh, two or so hours. This is like cold honey. And so in certain countertops, I'll run fracture lines all the way through it. Um, and I can show you what that looks like. So I let it drizzle where it's very little coming off my stick. Okay, start off your piece, let it run, and then just come across, okay? Now, because it's so set up, I can go slow, and this will be a fine, fine line that will stay. Now, if I do a big blob, it's gonna push all that epoxy downwards. So I'm just gonna come and do some fractures here and there, just like you would see in a piece of stone. Seeing it on camera just doesn't do it justice. No, you can't really pick up the diamond dust much? Not the fracture lines. Ah. You can a little bit, like right there is. It's starting to set down, so it's gonna like sit and it'll take a little bit of time. And I can add a few more of these since it still has a little working time. This is getting pretty thick, so you have to watch it on your edges because it'll stay thick. But I really like it. This and is really cool. Yeah, I'll keep playing with it. I think I might add a little something or move this area around with that aluminum. It's a little much for me. Busy? I, it's a little busy. So I'll probably do some more of those table drippings with the black. And we can pour it right in the middle. So let's do that. Okay, so I've mixed up some table epoxy, some black, some white, just kept moving it. And I'm gonna start this direction and kind of work my way around in circles. Because that aluminum was just a little too much for me. But I'm gonna leave some of it, so I'm not gonna fill in every little spot. See what happens with a little bit of alcohol. Just a couple little spritzes right in that center. Just to make those lines a little bit jagged. I'll probably play with it a little bit because uh, I never know when to walk away. And uh, <laughs> we'll show you the final piece tomorrow. Okay, we are back on the next day. And after lots of playing with this and adding drips from the table with spray paint in it, this table is absolutely gorgeous. I love the natural effects that it created, the movement. This is absolutely beautiful. Really reminds me of a geode, which is what I was going for. This could be on a wall if it wasn't a table. <laughs> Check that out, you guys. So amazing. So this shows you that even when it starts to kind of go south and it softens up too much, you can still save this. So now I'm gonna go ahead and scuff this with 220 sandpaper and I'm going to flood coat it with clear and we'll do the top coat the following day. Time to scuff this with 220. 
just hand scuffing it, checking for any dust nibs that were still left overnight as I go. Don't need to sand too hard. It's really just to be able to allow the clear coat to have some adhesion. On my edges, I like to be very soft, barely holding on to the sander, and I'm going over the round over. And for the edges, again, very soft because you don't want to burn through your color. And I'll do this on all edges and flood coat this with clear. All right, time for the flood coat. It's about 20 ounces of epoxy here and I've added just a pinch of diamond dust. Don't want too much because there's already a lot going on in this piece, but I just like a hint of shimmer. I've made sure that my table here is level. On a big countertop, I would use a square notch trowel to spread the epoxy, but because it's small, I use my hand. Let's torch it, warm it up a little, help it to flow. If you're in a really cold environment, you can set your epoxy bottles in front of a space heater or in a warm bathtub for a little bit to help your epoxy warm up. It's about 70 degrees in here right now, so it's not too cold, but torching it helps it start to move. So I'm just pushing this over, not really worrying about the edges yet. The edges will be tended to after I get epoxy throughout. This is the reason why I turn my buckets upside down. There's all this extra epoxy that you lose if you don't, or you waste, I should say. So this is called chopping. This is going to release any surface tension and if I've missed any spots, it'll push the epoxy into those areas. It'll also allow me to feel where maybe it's a little thick in one area and low in another, and I can push the epoxy that direction to help it level out. So I can see it was a little low towards this edge. I also want to push a little more towards the edges because I'm going to need that to flow over. And when I do my edges, so it's my hands are nice and saturated with the epoxy, I'm just gonna rub it right over that edge, rub my hand across, so that way the epoxy will coat it and flow over. All right, so I'm gonna torch this and then allow it to sit. I'm gonna set a 10 minute timer and I torch it three separate times to make sure there's no air bubbles left. Now, this is a perfect piece to explain that I highly recommend uh, videoing your process for anything because this started one way and then wasn't really happy with it, so I adjusted it. And that is gonna happen sometimes because epoxy has a mind of its own and ultimately that process will allow me to go back, watch what I did and recreate this as close as possible. If a customer came in and said, I love this piece, I want it just like that or similar to that. So I videotape everything. So once you torch, it'll start to level out and you're able to see where there's maybe some low spots. So you can take a little of the epoxy that's dripped off your table around the edges and just fill them in. Make sure you have really good lighting because sometimes you can't see it uh, until you get to another part of your you know, counter or table and then you notice the light hit it and you needed a little bit more there. Just make sure you torch that out. And it's gonna continue to self-level 
Uh, and so after a couple torches, if I notice a low spot, I can take a little bit more and add to those little spots and, and it'll level itself out. So this is the end of this process and tomorrow we will sand it down and put one of the top coats on it. Not sure if it's gonna be gloss or matte, so we'll figure that out tomorrow. We applied our gloss top coat and here's the final product. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please comment below and tell us what you liked about it. To see more videos just like this one, make sure you like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell to get notifications.